which people from all over the world aspire and have aspired since our beginning. People from 194 countries have come to America in order to participate in this dream. Tonight, we share the glimpse of that dream that continues night after night and day after day. We owe much to those who have come before us, to those who sought political freedom and personal freedom, as well as religious freedom. They left the old world in search for a new world, willing to leave behind the life they had known in order to start a new life and provide for their children a better life than they had known. A prayer from a Puritan forefather stated their heart's desire. Give me a draught of the eternal fountain that lies in thy immutable, everlasting love and decree. Then shall my hand never weaken, my feet never stumble, my sword never rest, my shield never rust, my helmet never shatter, my breastplate never fall, and my, as my strength rests in the power of thy might.
she was only 25, but the pressures of life had already etched old lines on her girlish countenance. She had watched and waited for her soldier husband, but he never returned. All that came was that letter from his commanding officer, killed in battle. So every day became the same, her hands moving to and fro, weaving lace, her mind moving back and forth, counting the dark things that fate can do. But one day was different. Light broke through her shattered life, a light brought by a commanding figure asking for help. Help not just for himself, General George Washington, but for his struggling new nation, America. <laughs> that shining light caught her soul. Together, they drew and shaped and worked and wove and planned six white bands and seven red, with a blue corner to lay some stars. General George suggested that the stars have six points, but the seamstress was adamant. There would be no six-pointed stars on her flag. Those were British stars, and to them she lost her husband. No, five points would do. They were symbols of freedom. She had her way. Betsy Ross began to manufacture large numbers of flags for the colonies. And as she works, the light that began in her small sewing room flared to the world as it touched the sky. It was this symbol of light that Francis Scott Key knew was a symbol of hope as well. The sight of the flag that day over Fort McKinley in the War of 1812 gave rise to the words that live on as our national anthem.
if at first you don't succeed, you're running about average. Out of the first four stores that F.W. Walworth started, three of them failed. But as you know, he kept at it. Admiral Perry attempted seven times to reach the North Pole. And on the eighth, he made it. Thomas Edison tried 1,600 different materials before settling on carbon for the filament for the electric light bulb. Oscar Hammerstein, Oscar Hammerstein had five flop shows before Oklahoma. And then Oklahoma ran for 2,248 performances. Similarly, Willie Mays didn't get a hit in his first 26 times at bat in the major leagues. Then his 27th try, he smashed a home run. John, John Creasy's 560 novels sold more than 60 million copies. But he collected 743 rejection slips from publishers before he managed to get one word in print. George Bernard Shaw was a bad speller. Benjamin Franklin, a poor mathematician. Einstein was expelled from school for being mentally slow. And everybody knows Babe Ruth hit 714 home runs. But did they remember that he struck out almost twice as many times getting to bat? You see, it's better to try and do something and fail than to try to do nothing and succeed. There are plenty of rules for attaining success, but somehow none of them work unless you work. Do you think Lewis and, the Lewis and Clark expedition was easy? As they headed west, trying to figure out what lay ahead of them, around the next bend in the river, they suffered numerous disasters as well as cruel winters, which would have stopped most men. Building the first railroad across from coast to coast across this continent, and building the interstate years later was not easy. But the indomitable American spirit that was the result of freedom and faith in God helped to accomplish the seemingly impossible. Those Americans who are described as having an indomitable spirit don't need pep talks or energy drinks. Their strength comes from within. The word indomitable comes from the Latin and means not able to be tamed. That describes Americans who possess a can-do attitude.
the eighth day, God looked down on his plant paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then head to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. I need somebody with arms strong enough to wrestle a calf, and yet gentle enough to deliver his own grandchild. Somebody to call hogs, tame cantankerous machinery, come home hungry, and have to wait for lunch till his wife is done feeding visiting ladies, and then tell the ladies to come back real soon and mean it. So God made a farmer. I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn colt and watch it back, then dry his eyes and say, maybe next year. I need somebody who can shape an axe handle from a persimmon sprout, chew a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make a harness out of hay wire, feed sacks, and shoe scraps, and who, planting time in harvest season, will finish his 40-hour week by Tuesday noon, and painted from track to back, will put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God had to have somebody willing to ride the ruts at double the speed to get the hay in ahead of the rain clouds and yet stop midfield and race the help when he sees the first smoke coming from a neighbor's place. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, yet gentle enough to tame lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink comb pullets, who will stop his mower for an hour to split the leg of a broken meadow water. It had to be somebody who plow deep and straight and not cut corners. Somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed, and rake, and disc, and plow, and plant, and tie, and fleece, and strain the milk, and replenish the self-feeder, and finish a hard week's worth with a five-mile drive to church. So God made a farmer. Somebody who'd bail a family with the soft, strong bonds of sharing. Who would sigh, and smile, and laugh, and then reply with smiling eyes when his son says he wants to do, and spend the rest of his life, doing what dad does. So God made a farmer. What a good day to be a farmer! <laughs> <laughs> That's it, sir. Uh, I hope they keep the cattle out of our field. Old turn, keep your soup.
is a cow, but that's no reason why they can't be friends. Territory folks should stick together, territory folks should all be cows. Cowboys dance with farmers, daughters, farmers dance with the ranchers, cows. Territory folks should stick together, territory folks should all be cows. Cowboys dance with the farmers, daughters, farmers dance with the ranchers, cows.
I hope we always have room for one more person, maybe an Afghan or a Pole or someone else looking for a place where he doesn't have to worry about his family starving or a knock on the door in the night, and where all men truly seek freedom and honor and respect and dignity for themselves and their posterity can find a place where they can finally see their dreams come true and their kids educated and become the next generation of doctors and lawyers and builders and soldiers and sailors. Love, John. For the healing of 
and continues to face new frontiers. Besides the untamed spirit that has helped shape the American dream, add to that the spirit of individualism, the spirit of compassion, the spirit of discovery, the spirit of innovation, the spirit of independence, the spirit of heritage, the spirit of freedom, the spirit of tomorrow, the spirit of self-reliance, the spirit of invention, the spirit of pioneering, and the spirit of knowledge. What makes America great? You do, and I do. But you and I will remain ineffective unless we enjoy the good hand of the Lord God upon us and our country. The Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we are truly blessed. And may God continue to bless America.
Now here's a moment to remember. Within five years, the student body of seven had grown to nearly 30 students. We needed a campus. Through a series of marvelous circumstances, a 95-acre dairy farm in Bradley, West Virginia was offered to us. When the funds were not coming in, Dr. Pipkin, along with three early staff leaders, Cal Bukema, John Van Poplin, Bill Hamner, they knelt in that pasture area where our Founder's Prayer Gazebo stands today. They prayed, God provided, how great thou art.
we found ourselves using the towel as a symbol of our call to serve the Lord. We call it the servant's mantle. We want to make this a moment to remind our students how God has equipped them to train, serve Him. It's a highlight to our graduation. At the conclusion of our graduation service, each degree graduate has a towel draped over their arm as a reminder that they've been trained to serve the Lord, to remind them of the high and holy calling that God has given to them. A collection of these is such a reminder to me. As I think of all of these different years and students that have gone from this place trained to serve, this collection is an encouragement to no, we've got graduates all around the world serving God. Through the power of God, truly, the Lord is in this place.
could we capture the essence of our vision in a few words? Which features really matter the most? Questions like this led us to construct a purpose statement which defined our vision in two primary areas. We were passionate about servants. We were passionate about serving around the world, God's church. With those two areas in mind, we constructed these words. Appalachian Bible College exists to educate and equip servants for the church of tomorrow while edifying the church of today. That statement was the passion of our hearts and with fervor we were determined to advance the church building upon that foundation, Jesus Christ.
our school seal. This school is intentionally symbolic of our vision also. The colors blue and gray were to represent our school colors chosen by our founders to extend an equal welcome to students that would come from the north or students that come from the south since West Virginia was located right along that geographic divide. That seal was encircled with sheaves of grain representing our passion to serve in the harvest fields of the world and really became the basis of our school verse. John 4, 36 is noted, He that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Central on this seal is the replica of the cupola located uh, on Pipkin Hall and Anderson Hall. Uh, that directional weather vane was to remind us that we were committed to going into all the world to preach the gospel. All of these symbolic reminders are captured in, in that motto because life is for service. O oh, Lord of Harvest, send forth servants.
those who've gone before us line the way, cheering on the faithful, encouraging the weary, their lives a stirring testament to God's sustaining grace.
Scripture affirmation of our agreement that the Bible stands. You know, woven throughout the vision of Appalachian Bible College has been the presence and importance of prayer. Gretchen Pipkin, wife of our beloved founding president, Lester Pipkin, composed our school song and appropriately entitled it The Prayer of ABC. Establish, strengthen ABC, from evil keep her free, her doctrine, Lord, must, and witness, Lord, must pleasing be to thee, and the riches of thy grace bestow on her, we pray, and keep her watching, working, Lord, until the crowning day. Sowing, reaping, gathering fruit, together we'll rejoice. With all the labors of all ages, praise thee with one voice. Reward sufficient it will be to hear thee say, well done. What joy to cast at thy pierced feet, our crowns for victories won. The urgent need of the gospel and the opportunity that God has given us with such wonderful resources demands that we continue this vision. We must continue to educate and equip servants for the church of tomorrow while edifying the church of today. I bow before you, Lord, and I pray, O oh God, lead us.
Oh, Father, we pray that that prayer might be our ambition in every way. Lead us, guide us, until we're home with you. We pray tonight that in this review of your goodness and faithfulness to us, that you alone will be exalted and honored. Remind our hearts of your goodness, and may we pledge again our commitment to faithfully serve you till you call or till you come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.